I want to take you out to dinner. And then I want to go back to my apartment and watch Kung Fu. Do you ever watch Kung Fu? I love Kung Fu. Channel 39. Totally. You should come over and watch Kung Fu tonight. Okay. Great. Okay. Can we order lunch first? Yeah. Okay. So I've always enjoyed Office Space as an amazing comedy, but it was also a movie that to me personally was very inspiring because of one particular sequence. Now, the story is about Peter Gibbons. He is stuck, stuck and miserable. Miserable in his relationship, miserable in traffic, and most of all, miserable at his office job. I mean, as he talks about his life. So that means that every single day that you see me, that's on the worst day of my life. What about today? Is today the worst day of your life? Yeah. Wow, that's messed up. Yet, he cannot escape it, because just like his friends and co-workers, he feels that he has no choice but to do the work or he will lose all of his stability. What if we're still doing this when we're 50? It would be nice to have that kind of job security. He hates his work, yet he is afraid of losing it. He doesn't enjoy his relationship, yet he is afraid of losing it. Hey, she have not been over here in a while. You two still going out? Yeah. I guess. I, I don't know. Sometimes I get the feeling like she's cheating on me. Yeah, I get that feeling too, man. What do you mean by that? But then he gets hypnotized and for a part of the film he is just completely relaxed and calm. Everything that is wrong in his life just falls away. He stops worrying and starts to live life authentically, relaxed and happy. He doesn't go to work anymore because he doesn't feel like it. He calmly asks out the girl he truly likes, where before he was afraid to do it. I was asking what you were doing for lunch. Would you like to have lunch with me? <laughs> are, you, are you serious? Yeah. He ignores his bosses and creates a wonderful view for himself. He becomes able to do this only when he lets go of other people's expectations and opinions. And as soon as he does that, he becomes free. Good luck with your layoffs, all right? I hope your firings go really well. Okay, excellent. Great. Wow. And I think that this is something that we can all relate to, but that we often forget. But before we continue, a brief word from our sponsor. Now, one of my frustrations is something that I noticed when I moved from the Netherlands to Hong Kong for a year, was how different the films and series were on streaming platforms like Netflix due to geo restrictions. I would want to watch a film I knew was on Netflix in the Netherlands, but I couldn't cause it wasn't in Hong Kong. And back in the Netherlands, vice versa. With Atlas VPN, you can access every country's streaming service library by connecting to a server in that country. Of course, another important use of Atlas VPN is to protect your internet data and online activities, but it might even help to save you some money. Because not only content libraries of streaming services are impacted by geography, the prices of various services are much higher in some countries than in others. So when booking a flight for example, you can use Atlas VPN to connect to a server in a country where the prices offered are cheaper. Now Atlas VPN is offering a 3 year plan for only $1.39 a month, a 86% discount. Besides that, they have a 30 day money back guarantee so if you want to try it out click the link in the description below a lot of people know the experience of feeling stuck discontent worrying too much about stuff that truly doesn't matter about other people's opinions wait peter peter you gotta postpone it man tell me you've been sick make something up oh no way no i feel great it's the best day of my life it's no coincidence that Office Space came out in the same year as Fight Club, The Matrix and American Beauty. This was the year of the Cubicle movie. These were movies that were made in a year of stability and prosperity, in the decade after the Cold War ended and before 9-11. The movies of this year aren't about defeating a great existential threat, but about coping with the anxiety and discontentment of a stable corporate job. The middle children of history, man. No purpose or place. We have no great war, no great depression. Our great war is a spiritual war. Our great depression is our lives. 
1999 was about dealing with the apathy of this stable prosperity. Now, in all these movies, the answer to this problem is different. For one main character, it was starting an underground fight club. Gentlemen, welcome to fight club. For another, it was going back to smoking weed, working out, and for some reason fantasizing about your teenage daughter's best friend. And yet for another, it was taking a red pill and realizing his entire reality was a lie. Welcome to the desert of the real. But for Office Space's Peter Gibbons, it's getting hypnotized and just letting go, becoming zen. Now, although since the late 90s, where we have seen many companies implement a much more fun and exciting world culture than the soul-sucking grey cubicles of the 90s, often this feeling of anxiety and discontentment is still very much there for us. Mark Manson describes this in his book The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. We have a culture today that is obsessively focused on unrealistic positive expectations. Be happier, be healthier, be smarter, be faster, be richer, be sexier, and be more popular, more envied and admired. Yet although these sound as noble aspirations, they constantly put focus on our perception of personal shortcomings. If we constantly feel that we should be making more money, it enforces our belief that we don't have enough. If we fixate about what should be better in our lives, it only reminds us of what we are lacking, which causes anxiety. As he says, the desire for a positive experience is in itself a negative experience. And the acceptance of a negative experience is in itself a positive experience. And at the core of this, there is the problem of exceptionalism. The only thing we're doing is the impossible, right? Everything else is fucking gray. What well, you're said to be a philosopher or a king or fucking Shakespeare, and this is all they give you, this? I want unlimited things, I want everything. I want a real fucking love, a real fucking house, a real fucking thing to do every day. And I just, I'd just rather die if I don't get it. Human existence is simply, for the most part, a pretty average experience. We are all pretty average at most things we do. And if we're lucky, we might become good in a couple things. And if we are extremely lucky, we may become truly exceptional at one thing. Rage over the nature and unequal distribution of talent. Rage that genius appears where it appears for no material reason at all. Desiring a thing cannot make you have it. But nobody is great at everything. As Manson argues, brilliant businessmen are often fuck-ups in their personal lives, and extraordinary athletes may be dumber than a lobotomized rock. Welcome back, dum dum. Many celebrities will be as clueless and insecure about many aspects of their life as the people that worship them. At the same time, our experience of life is pretty average as well. Most of life takes place in the humdrum middle. Yet, we are continuously bombarded with the exceptional through social media. We see the best food, the most beautiful places, the most attractive people and the most extraordinary experiences. We are conditioned that the exceptional is the new normal. And because our life can impossibly live up to that standard, we suffer. The deluge of exceptional information drives us to feel pretty darn insecure and desperate. So more and more we feel the need to compensate through entitlement and addiction. The internet is not only an open source of information, it is also an open source of insecurity, self-doubt and shame. The answer to this anxiety is not to frantically try to get more money or fame or approval or obsessively chase pleasure in the form of sex, drugs, parties, alcohol, etc. Instead, we have to let go of what does not truly matter. And this is beautifully illustrated by Peter in Office Space. The funny thing is that as soon as he lets go, as soon as he stops giving a fuck, everything starts to go better for him. He gets stepped for a promotion. But what if you were offered some kind of a stock option equity sharing program? Would that do anything for you? 
I don't know, I guess. He starts dating a new girlfriend who he can watch Kung Fu with. And although it is paradoxical to get what you want as soon as you stop caring about it, I do think that it is a truth that we have all experienced at least once or twice in our lives. A moment where we have felt completely stuck, unable to reach something, but as soon as we said fuck it, everything fell into place. But there is an important difference between what I think is the actual experience of letting go and that of Peter in office space. I mean, it would be very nice if you could just get hypnotized into becoming completely zen, yet this is not reality. Like Mark Manson explains, when most people envision giving no fucks whatsoever, they imagine a kind of serene indifference to everything, a calm that weathers all storms. They imagine and inspire to be a person who is shaken by nothing and caves in to no one. But, as he states, this is impossible. And it is also not preferable. We are hardwired to give a fuck. To not give a fuck about anything is to be a sociopath. Because of this, he argues, it is not about not giving a fuck. It is about being very selective with the fucks that you give. I would argue that there are two different sides to the art of not giving a fuck or the art of letting go. On the one hand, there is developing the ability to let go of what does not truly matter. And this ranges from deep-seated issues like working through and letting go of childhood traumas to stop caring about things that lead to self-destructive behavior, things that are discussed in David Hawking's book Letting Go. But there's also a more lighthearted aspect to this, which is not giving as many fucks about unimportant trivial shite like your ex-girlfriend's Facebook post, being stuck in traffic or a printer that doesn't work. If we can stay calm in the face of these daily annoyances, this already greatly benefits our lives. And the letter is done by upgrading your problems, because it is important to realize that you will always have problems. Problems are a constant aspect in life. There is no magical endpoint where you have reached all your goals, you feel perfectly content and your experience is absolute bliss. Every problem solved will generate new problems, because whatever makes us feel good will inevitably come with problems. The love of your life is the person you fight with, the dream house you finally buy is the dream house you repair and your job promotion comes with new stress and responsibilities and if we avoid all these problems if we become nihilistic and we uh, for example escape into netflix fast food drinking or drugs well we all know the literal hell of a path that will create so if the first step is letting go or not giving a fuck about the problems in our lives that are unimportant, but simultaneously we know that if we let go of these, they will still be replaced by new problems, the next step is to choose better problems. Now, we often ask ourselves and others, what do we want in life? But Mark Manson argues that this is a rather cheap and irrelevant question. Because we all want plenty of money, great sex, we want to be in tip-top shape, have amazing relationships, have a good family, have amazing travel experience, great food and good comfort. Basically, we want to be happy and to not be suffering. Yet, paradoxically, avoiding suffering creates suffering, while actively seeking out suffering and pain ultimately creates purpose and happiness. According to Manson, therefore, we should not ask ourselves what will make us happy, we should ask ourselves what are we willing to suffer for. Everything worth having in life comes from overcoming the associated negative experience. That is the true and subtle art of not giving a fuck. It is the careful and deliberate choosing of the problems you want to solve, what you are willing to suffer for while still enjoying the process of it. It's time for you to look inward and begin asking yourself the big questions. Who are you? And what do you want? Now, of course, this does tend to fall into the great and true, but also very cliche advice of step outside your comfort zone and you will achieve great things. It's advice that most of us have heard before and probably gave us a warm, excited and motivated feeling. But I do know, if stepping out of your comfort zone feels like this, you're not doing it correctly. 
in fact, you're probably not doing it at all. Because from personal experience, I can say that the times that I did truly step outside my comfort zone, it had amazing consequences in my life. But it was not easy to do. In fact, it was very, very uncomfortable. For example, before I went on a solo trip to Bali, which turned out to be one of the most amazing travel experiences of my life, I was scared shitless. It was my first time traveling to Asia and most of all it was the first time that I was traveling alone without friends or family to a country I'd never been. Yet it turned out to be the best travel experience of my life. And the same is true when I was about to go on the first date with what now is my girlfriend and funnily enough she almost didn't show up because she was also so nervous that she wanted to bill. Yet we both found the courage to go on a date and now we're very happy together and it worked out great. Often the best things in life come from doing that which is uncomfortable, scary and painful. And there is no magic hypnosis that can make it easy to do this. It shouldn't be. And I'm the first to admit that there have been many times in my life where I didn't break out of my comfort zone, where I knew I had to say fuck it and do something, but I was too scared. And I know that I've missed out on opportunities because of it. The fact is that stepping outside of your comfort zone is genuinely hard, but it is a muscle that can be trained. We do this by gradually expanding our ability of saying fuck it to what is new and what is uncomfortable. Simultaneously, we also can't step out too far out of our comfort zone. Many of us, for example, dream of being a rock star on stage with millions of fans or being the CEO and founder of a huge multi-billion dollar company. But if we're honest with ourselves, if we were transported into that role, the pressure and the stress would likely make us have a full panic attack and, and we would just crumble down and be unable to function. Stepping outside of our comfort zone is something that we must do no matter how hard it is. We must therefore do it gradually and with incremental steps. And that is the true and subtle art of not giving a fuck. Thank you to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. Get 86% off a 3 year subscription by clicking the link in the description below.